So saints, you're at a good place today. I'm going to say that again. You are at a good place today. We've had a good week up to now, and there's no reason for me to doubt what God is doing, what God want to do, what God will do. And as we enter into this weekend, I'm here to tell you one more time, mm, 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 you are too blessed to be stressed. I'm going to say it again. You are too blessed to be stressed. So I don't know what you came to the line with, uh, carrying. I don't know what you're dealing with in your personal life, but I'm here to tell you today, shake it off. So if you're viewing this on YouTube, if you're viewing this on social media, God is speaking to you today to shake it off. Let it go. Let go of, let go of all forms of negativity because this is your day to be blessed. This is your day to be blessed. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, I, I want to talk to you today about doubt, about doubt. See, 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 many of us don't realize the impact of doubt and how it is able to negatively affect our lives. I really do believe that God is going to challenge some of us today to move past to move past that place where they're stuck, move past that place where they're doubting. Why? Because in order to step into that change, you are going to have to leave no room for doubt. I'm going to say it again. My theme for today is leave no room for doubt. Praise God. Why? Because doubt is the enemy of a good man. Doubt is the enemy of a good woman. Are you hearing me? And I and I know I'm talking to some good men and some good women. If you're viewing this, if you're on the prayer line this morning, you are a good man. You are a good woman. And if you let it, if you let doubt, you know, have its place, if you let doubt have place in your, in your life, doubt will kill your hopes. It will kill your dreams. It will kill your visions, your wants, those things that you're desiring in your life. Doubt will kill it because it will have you waiting for something that might not never happen. You have to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. You got to be able to leave no room for doubt. Thank you, Lord. And I'm thanking God for Jesus because I recognize and realize God got a plan and a purpose for all of our lives. See, and, and understand this now, besides your salvation, Besides your salvation, because I got to put that first and above everything else. Thank God I'm saved. You should be saying, thank God I'm saved. I'm here to let you know today, today is a good day to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not saved, this is something you need to consider today. You need to come to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, the most valuable asset that you have outside of your salvation is time. Time. Ooh, Lord Jesus, time. I mean, when I look back over my life and I say, man, how did I get to this age? How did I get to this place in my life? And I realized I got here one day at a time, but I didn't always pay attention to time. I didn't always count oh, the course of the things that, ooh, you know what I'm talking about now. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. You didn't always count the course of some of those choices and decisions. And you allowed doubt to override those things that you should have been doing. Lord Jesus, God is speaking to you today. See, see, realize you don't have a lot of time based upon the time you've already wasted. Lord Jesus. And I can dare say all of us, all of us, if you're viewing this, uh, you're on the prayer line this morning, all of us have wasted some good time. And, and it might not have been with a, 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 a someone of the opposite sex, or it might, it, it could have been just looking at television. I mean, television is a time waster. You could be on social media too long. I'm not going to say don't go on it, but you can be on it too long. You can give more time to social media than you give to your Bible, into the, woo, let's just say, into the art of prayer. Because Lord knows, uh, I mean, if I can just pray a little bit more. Uh, yeah, and, and look here now, understand this now. It's not like you got to be up there praying like a theologian. It's not like you got to pray these long, drawn-out prayers. Oh, no. Uh-uh. All you got to do is come in spirit and come in truth. 
and God will answer your prayers. Are you hearing me? See, 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 because the time that we wasted doing things that really didn't benefit us. It really did. Some of those things you did really didn't benefit you. It didn't benefit you in reference to your walk. It didn't benefit you in reference to the lifestyle. It didn't benefit you in reference to your spiritual growth and development. But God is about to do a new thing in you. Are you hearing me? God is about to do a new thing in you. But you got to open. You got to open up the door of your heart and receive. Uh, oh, Lord God, this pure, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, James 1 and 8 says, a double-minded man, a double-minded woman is unstable in all their ways. Lord Jesus, you mean to tell me when I'm double-minded? I'm unstable in all my ways. Yes, that's what the word says. That's what the word says. In other words, if you're unstable over here, you're going to be unstable over there. See, you're going to have to be able to stand on this word of God and stand on this word of God in a way, whereas, you know, you're not going to give no place or space to doubt. My God, my God, you can't afford to be double-minded. You have to know that you know that you know that this gospel is going to work even when it don't look like it. The Bible says we learn to walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm going to take God at his word. I'm going to take God at his word. See, you have to know in your heart. See, why do I say in your heart? Because out of your heart will come the issues of life. What you are living is what's in your heart. I'm not talking about what's up in your mind because you can change your mind. But what's in your heart is deep seated. Thank you, Jesus. That's why you got to filter some of that stuff that's coming through your mind so that that bad negativity Activity, that bad stuff don't work its way down into your heart and take you in a direction that you don't need to go. Are you hearing me? And understand now mm, 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 that the choices and decisions you are making today, whew, it has to be coming from a good place. You see, I, I, I need to make sure. Whew, that's why I need to make sure I'm in that word of God. That's, that's another reason why I need to make sure I'm around good people, healthy people, like-minded people, people that have a vision, people that have a dream, people that's, that's in my life to encourage me, people that's in my life to, to remind me of who I am when I fall short. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I don't want to be thin-skinned. I want to be able to receive constructive criticism. See, because doubt will give place to fear. Let me say that again now. I got to say it again. Doubt will give place to fear. And if you give place to fear, you're going to begin to worry. And then all kinds of negativity is going to open the door to all kinds of negativity. And you're wondering why you're feeling so sad, doom and gloom. You're wondering why, you know, your life is at a place where you feel like you're stuck in the corner or, 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 or your life is caught up between a rock and a hard place. And there's no way to turn. Why? Because you've given place to doubt. And why? Because doubt will bring fear. And the Bible says fear will always bring torment. Lord Jesus. I mean, haven't you tormented yourself enough? I'm not talking about people. I'm not even talking about the devil. I'm talking about what you are able to do to yourself when you give place to fear. We have to stand in faith as Christians. As a believer, you have to walk by faith and not by sight. You have to, ooh, are you hearing me today? You have to learn to fight a good fight of faith. Why? Because doubt will keep you moving, will keep you from moving forward. Let me say it again. Doubt will keep you from moving forward. Matter of fact, it will literally have you sit yourself down. Are you hearing me? Have you sit yourself down as if you were a car parked on a highway called life? And you know, you know, you take a good car in some neighborhoods and leave it parked there. Oh, Lord Jesus, you come back later mm, mm, mm. and, and somebody going to take those tires, somebody going to break in, take that radio, take those part, uh, catalytic converter and all that other good stuff that will keep that car, keep that car from running. And you're wondering why you're not able to keep moving forward. You're wondering why there's no change in your life. Why? Because you've given place to doubt. You've given place to doubt. Leave no room for doubt. See, because doubt will block those doors. Let me say this now. Doubt will block those doors and roads leading to your opportunities. 
man, I'm talking about the God of more than enough. I'm talking about the God that want to bless you, press down, taking together, and throwing over. I mean, God want to just bless you. You, you, I can't even begin. You can't even begin to imagine how many opportunities you've already missed. Your, your eyes was closed to, you were blind to, because you've allowed yourself uh, to, 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 to hold on to that negativity, to entertain stuff that wasn't going to benefit you. Doubt will block those doors and roads leading to your opportunities, to your elevation. The Bible says there is a high calling on your life. And God wants you to be able to step into your change. Are you hearing me today? God wants you to step into your change. You have to leave no room for doubt. With God's help and your willingness to work with him. See, you got to want to work with God now. Some of us have worked with the devil long enough, too long. Matter of fact, are you hearing me? But God says his hand is out. He's out. His hand is out. Matter of fact, you remember when Peter was when he was drowning, when he was when he was sinking, and he he thought he was looking out on that water, and and he seen what he thought was a ghost, and then he said, "Oh Jesus, if that's you, tell me to come to you." And what did Jesus said? Jesus said, "Come." Now, now understand. Now Peter wasn't on that boat by himself. Now those other disciples were on that boat with him, but but Peter was the only one that had enough faith to come. I, I come to Jesus. I'm here to tell you today. Come to Jesus. Uh, oh my God, He'll make a way out of nowhere. He will change that. He will change the structure of that water, the molecular structure of that water. He will make it like a like a like a like a road, like a sidewalk. Uh, and Peter began to walk to Jesus. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, Jesus, he extended his hand and he said, Come on, let's walk. Come on, let's walk and talk together. Thank you, Jesus. How can you walk with somebody and not talk with them? Ooh, are you hearing me? Oh, my God, my God. Huh? This is your day to step into your chance. This is your day to be blessed. Mm, 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 mm. You have to be willing to work with God. Mm, mm, mm. Work with that Holy Spirit. You know, see, and understand that what's happened to you in reference to negatively happened to you in the past that have affected your life, impacted your life. See, you have to you have to not give it life by keep allowing yourself to keep recycling it. You got to you got to you, you got to park it. You got to put it by the curb and say, uh, uh, not today, devil, not today, devil. Uh, 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 uh. I'm gonna leave my past in the past. Why? Because I'm not gonna allow my 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 past to to seep into my present or my future. Uh, uh. Uh, now nah, I got the, I got, I realize that God has called me. He has called you to something bigger than what you're living right now. You just got to be able to believe. You got to be able to believe in order to receive. Now, are you willing? Now, oh Lord, did, did you hear what I said? Are you willing to let go of the weight of doubt? See, doubt has weight now. See, I, I mean, doubt has weight. And, and, and understand now, when I say it has weight, and you, you got to believe that yesterday's problem, trials, and tests are in your past. See, because that the weight of those problems, the weight of those trials, the weight of those tests, some of you are still carrying it. The weight of that sickness, the weight of that breakup, the weight of that heartache, the weight of what someone may have said about you, the weight of what you may have done that wasn't good and you know you were better than that, but that was in your past. You have to be able to leave your past in your past. Thank you, Jesus. Let it no longer have effect upon your life in a negative way. I can't let, I can't let these things continue to affect my life in a negative way. See, and that's it. See, and you have to be able to see that now. Because look at look at look at this. I I love that apostle Paul, man. That that brother was deep. That brother was deep. See, you know, we got some people in the church now. I'm here to tell you now. You got some people in the church that want to be deep, but they're no deeper than a puddle. But this brother named Paul Woo, Lord, I'm talking about the same one that persecuted the church when they caught when his name was Saul. That brother was deep. That brother wrote two thirds of the New Testament. And looking at Philippians chapter three and the 13th verse, it says, brothers and sisters, not quite like that, but you know, I had to put my little spin on it. Brothers and sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind. That's it, saints. See, you got to let go of that weight, man. I'm here to tell you now. You got to let go of doubt, worry, fit. You got to let go of that double-mindedness and understand that the best is yet to come. You got to understand opportunity is calling. Opportunity is waiting. God is wanna, God want to bless you. There's an open door before you that no man can close. That door is still open for opportunity. That door is still open for the blessing. That door is still open for you ooh, to step into your change. What does he say? I have not yet. I count not myself to have apprehended. Oh, my God, my God. Some of us think we know so much, but know so little. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, in reaching forth unto those things which are before, I'm here to remind you, he woke you up this morning. There is a future calling you by name. God wants you to leave your past in the past and to step into that marvelous, glorious, stupendous, magnificent future. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Matter of fact, that 14 verse says, I press. And my brother, my sister, there's some stuff you're going to have to press through. You're going to have to press through that sickness. I know what the doctor say. And what he says is not always, you know, something I want to hear, something you might want to hear. I, I know what people might be saying about you. But it, understand, what does God say about you? Uh, I'm here to tell you now, you are new and improved and a special edition. Uh, if you can grab onto this word, uh, God will pick you up, turn you around. Uh, God will make a way way out of nowhere. I'm preaching to myself right now. And I'm thanking God. Why? Because I know God loves me. And I'm here to tell you today, God loves you. Press. Keep on pressing, my sister. Keep on pressing, my, blood, my brother. Know that doubt has no place in your life. You got to let it go. You got to lay it down. You got to take the hammer to it and break it up. Break it up. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Man, understand the thoughts you're entertaining today have the power to bring you into your future, to bring you into your destiny. Bring you into your destiny. Every destiny has a destination. Are you going in the right direction? Is your life going in the right direction? That's the question today. See, and, and some of us, we need to really take an honest look at ourselves, within ourselves, and then we have to be honest with ourselves about ourselves. Oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, there's a whole lot of meat in this now. Man, oh, man, oh, man, a whole lot of meat in this now. Uh, I, I, I turned into a vegetarian, but I realized there's a lot of meat in this. There's some steak in this, Lord Jesus. Ooh, some fish, some salmon. There's some, ooh, there's some stuff up in here. I'm here to tell you now. God want to bless you real good, but when you fail the plan, you plan to fail. When you fail the plan, you plan to fail. And this is why you gotta, you have to be able to ask yourself: Is your life going in the right direction? Is my life going in the right direction? Take a moment, think about it right now. Be honest with yourself about yourself. Am I doing what I want to do, what I feel I need to do or should be doing? What, what, what questions are you asking yourself? Because until you understand, you know, the course, the direction, until you understand the nature of the call that is on your life, you will never be able to leave go. That box called go. You will be stuck. You will be parked. Mm, mm, mm. and you will be living a unfulfilled life. God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be blessed. See, and, and the real deal is in the journey, you know, you know that, that you're dealing with on this, this journey, man, these issues that you're dealing with on this journey, God wants you to be able to work through those things. God wants you to be able to work through those things, but you have to be able to remove all doubt. You have to be able, you really have to be able to remove all doubt, especially when you're faced with those problems and situations that, 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 can, that can have you or place you in a, a dark place. 
a, a, a place where, you know, we talked yesterday about compromising. You know, you don't want to compromise your core values and belief. See, but but that's what doubt will do. It will place you, you know, on a on a on a on a bench, on a log, on a on a fence, and have you compromising, not knowing which way to turn, which way to go. Leave no room for doubt. Leave no room for doubt, especially when you have to make some important decisions that can cause your life. You know, if you don't make those right decisions, what, what will happen? It will cause your life to spiral out of control. See, and you know, hey, I don't think none of us, I don't think none of you can afford to, to interrupt any more of your life in a negative way. So I have to pay attention to the choices and decisions that I'm making in this life. Look at James chapter one. James chapter one, starting at the fifth verse says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him, let her ask of God who will give all men and women liberally and upbraid if not, and it shall be given to them. But let them act in faith, nothing wavering. See, you you got to know, you got to remove the doubt now. See, that's right there saying you got to let go of doubt. But let let them, let him, let her act in faith, nothing wavering. That nothing wavering means you have to remove all doubt. For they that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man, that woman think that they shall receive anything of the Lord or from the Lord. Uh, why? Because a double-minded person, a double-minded man, a double-minded woman is unstable in, in all their ways. Saints, you can't afford to be double-minded. As I said, leave no room for doubt. You see, see, and, and understand this, your life will usually move in a direction of your dominant thoughts. You know, those thoughts you focus on, those thoughts that you've given life to, your life is going to move in that direction, move towards those things. Matter of fact, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as a, as a man, as a woman thinks in their heart, so were they. And let me paraphrase, so shall they become. So you have to be able to think on those things that are good, those things that would be of a good report. Oh, let me not get ahead of myself. See, you have to be able to understand it's the things that you carry, those thoughts that you carry in your heart, those inner thoughts, thoughts that you don't share. Oh, there's things that you don't share, but it's still being played out in your life. You have to be able to maintain a positive attitude. Oh, look, I think somewhere I heard uh, your attitude will determine your altitude. Some of us uh, are doing so bad, so poorly. Why? Because of the mere fact our attitude is not what it should be as Christians. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to give account for what the world is doing. But as a man, woman of God, Lord Jesus, you have to lift up a standard. Don't you know who you are? Don't you know who you connected to? Don't you know that the best is still yet to come? I'm here to tell you, you have to be able to maintain a positive attitude, especially when you find yourself facing a problem or a trial or a test or a challenge that is beyond your control. As the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Thank you, Jesus. See, and and, and 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 you know what you know what Paul says in Philippians, Philippians one and two, he says, My brothers, my sisters, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. See, he didn't say if, he didn't say maybe, uh-uh. He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tests. Lord Jesus. See, see, and we have to be able to count it all joy. See, hey, why? Because number one, I feel it. Number one, I, I see that there's something I need to work on. There's something I need to do. And look what he says. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. The trying of your faith, oh, the testing of your faith will produce patience. But let patience have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God doesn't want you to lack anything. I'm talking about the God of more than enough. 
I'm talking about the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. Thank you, Jesus. You have to be able to keep faith and hope alive. Thank you, Jesus. You have to be able to stir up an atmosphere, uh, an environment, I should say, that, you know, that I want to sit in, that I want to be in, because that mind will take you places where you need not go. Are you hearing me? Oh, left to yourself, your mind will take you places. Oh, God, I can't believe I did this to myself. I can't believe I've allowed myself to think like this, to walk like this, to talk like this, to do this. You have to be able to leave no room for doubt. Why? Why? Because patience is a virtue. And when I say patience is a virtue, patience is a good thing. Thank God for patience. Uh, you know how it is when you're standing in one of those uh, lines uh, waiting to get to the cashier and the cashier is talking to that somebody that they're dealing with right now. And you're wondering why they talking about stuff in, you know that's not relative or relating to the purchase that that person just brought. Y'all talking about the picnic or the park or the this and the that or the dog or the cat. I'm trying to get out of here. Can you please do your work? Can you please let that lady do her job? So on and so forth. And we are so impatient. I'm here to tell you, patience is a virtue. Count your blessings, name them one by one. You see, it's a difference. It's the difference between you being led by the spirit and you being led by your flesh. And when I say led by your flesh, led by your flesh in the devil. The Bible says the devil has deceived the whole world. And all of us, one time or another, have been deceived by the enemy, giving place to the enemy. See, and, and when you give place to doubt, you're giving place to the devil who wants to stop you. That devil is out to stop you. He's out to keep you from becoming the man, the woman God sent you here to be. And I'm here to tell you, and I tell you every day, you are amazing. You are amazing. I have not seen, nor ear have heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those of you who love him. And if you're here viewing this, if you're here on the prayer line this morning, it's because you love him. And I'm here to tell you, my God, my God, oh Lord, God spared nothing. He gave you his best when he gave you his son. Are you hearing me today? He gave you his best when he gave you his son. Now, the question today is, what are you doing with the best of what you have? Oh, Lord Jesus. See, see, when you are able to remove all doubt, you'll free yourself to stand in faith. You got to be able to stand in faith. You got to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. See, and doubt is in place to try to do what? To negate that. Doubt doesn't want you to, 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 to believe in God, doesn't want you to believe in yourself, doesn't want you to see the vision, doesn't want you to believe that, my God, you can step into a change. You have to be able to remove all doubt and free yourself to stand in faith and not succumb to the tricks and schemes of the enemy. That devil is real. That devil is real. John 10 and 10 says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus, thank God for the but, but Jesus says he come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, I said, whoa, wait a minute now. Let's back up. He says so that you might have life. Now, why would he put that in there? If Jesus shows up, you mean to tell me? That I might have life? Wait, wait, wait a minute. That don't even sound right because I know Jesus can do anything but fail. It's not on the part of Jesus. It's on your part to remove all doubt and to have enough faith to know that he can do what needs to be done in your life. Are you hearing me today? That's why he says might. Because you have to make a decision to walk by faith and not by sight. Even when it doesn't seem or appear to be working for you, I have to trust God and take him at his word. Are you hearing me? I can't afford to succumb to the tricks and schemes of the enemy. See, and if you want to reap the benefits and the blessings of God's generosity, I'm talking about the God of more than enough. Oh, Lord Jesus. Who are you hearing me? The God of more than I was looking. You know, we, we talked about Solomon, how God blessed Solomon with wisdom. Oh, my God. He had the wisdom, but he didn't have common sense. The, oh, oh, my God. I mean, God's generosity. 
cannot be matched or compared. God has blessed you above and beyond. Thank you, Jesus. Please use some wisdom and show enough, use some common sense and receive the love of God. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to be patient. I know you, you know, we're living in a hurry up society, hurry up world, instant society. I want it now. I should have got it yesterday. Some things you're going to have to wait for. Some things you're going to have to wait for it. Are you hearing me? And you have to be patient in your waiting. You're going to have to be a patient, patient. Lord Jesus, let me say that again. You are going to have to be a patient, patient. Thank you, Jesus. God working on all of us. I'm a patient of our King. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and he's telling me today, I got to be patient. Thank you, Lord. See, patient and positive in your thinking. See, you got to be patient and positive in your thinking. And you do that by maintaining a Christ-like attitude and mindset. Lord Jesus, mindset. Let this, if, if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Aren't you glad you're not lost? Aren't you glad he brought you out of darkness and placed you in his marvelous light? I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm believing God that the best is still yet to come. Ooh, man, because there's going to be times in all of our lives when we're going to find ourselves in some situations that just doesn't make sense. How did I get here? What happened? What did I do or didn't do? What? Phew, Lord Jesus. See, we're not in control as, as, as much as we might think. See, things just happen. Things just crop up, show up. But I'm here to tell you now, huh? when you're in Christ and Christ is in you, Oh, my God, my God. Uh, hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. God has a way of bringing you through. I was thinking about that brother named Paul, uh, Paul when he was going through that storm called your rocking. And, and the Bible says that the ship that they was on was breaking up. I mean, they, they left the shore. It was sunshiny. It was nice. It was a calm, sunshiny day. The start of your day was calm. It was sunshiny. It was bright. It was lovely. And then when he got out there in the middle of that water, it's something about that storm just began to wake and quake and it began to tear up that ship. They, matter of fact, they start throwing everything overboard, trying to lighten the load because they didn't want the ship to sink. And some of us are trying to lighten the load. We trying to get rid of people, trying to get rid of this, trying to get rid of that. And the real deal is we still sinking. We still going to a bad place. Why? Because we don't have the attitude and the mindset, that Christ-like attitude and mindset. We're not maintaining it. And we're wondering why life is not going the way we want it to go. See, and, and, see, and, and, and you're going to have to be able to maintain a clear and positive mindset if you want to experience or live in, I should say, the peace of God. The peace of God. And this is why you leave no room for doubt. I got to know that I know I'm in his hands. I got to know that I know that my God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Look at, look at Philippians 4 and 7. Philippians 4 and 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. See, see, the peace of God, Lord Jesus, I'm not talking about the peace that you'll get in the world, the peace that will you'll find at the end of a stem or a joint or anything like that. I'm not talking about the peace that you will have after you've engaged in a relationship with someone and you're just laying there looking up and you say, oh boy, uh -uh. I'm talking about the peace of God. Lord Jesus, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Man, oh man, oh man. You see, and, and, and Paul gives us the key to not giving place to doubt. See, 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 Paul gives us the key to the keys, I should say, the keys to not giving place to doubt. Are you hearing me? See, you're to meditate upon those things that are good. Matter of fact, the eighth verse says, finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever things are true. Mm, see, you're not to meditate upon the lie. See, and some of us have lied to ourselves so long, we, we end up turning our lie, that lie into a truth. And, we're, and we're, sit we're sitting and we're parked on the highway called life because we kept recycling that lie. And We've come to a place where we're believing the lie. 
over the truth. Don't you know you were born an original? You don't have to die a copy of nobody else. Don't you know the best is still yet to come? Don't you know, my God, my God, you are too gifted, you are too blessed to be stressed. Don't you know that you are amazing? Don't you know that God spared nothing when he sent you here? He blessed you exceedingly and abundantly. Why? Because he wants you to succeed. He wants you to answer the call that is on your life. Oh, my God, my God. Look what he says, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate upon these things, the things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do these things, oh God. In the God of peace, Lord Jesus. And I know somebody viewing this. I know somebody on this prayer line this morning. You, you need some peace. You woke up in some <clears throat> helter skelter. You woke up with some negativity this morning. Huh? You woke up in the argument. Huh? Oh, God, you don't even want to go to work. Huh? You don't even want to go outside the door of your home today. Why? Because I just don't feel like it. Huh? Why? Because I don't know the peace of God, that peace of God uh, that compasses all understanding. Oh, and the God of peace will be with you. See, and that's it. See, 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 you have to follow Paul's instructions. See, that's it right there. You have to submit those words in your heart, meditate upon these things, and the God of peace will be with you. See, and understand this now. God will not just bless you with his presence. He will give you a clear and positive mindset so you can produce, so you can manifest, and not just manifest, but also maintain a fruitful and rewarding life. Lord Jesus. And fulfilled life, man, a fulfilled life, man. So many of us, man, struggling. And I'm not talking about the people in the world. I'm talking about those of us who are in Christ, struggling. I'm talking about your daddy. Don't you know who your daddy is? I'm talking about your Abba Father. I'm talking about that God that is bigger, that God that is better. I'm talking about the ancient of days. I'm talking about Jehovah Jireh, my provider, the God that says uh, in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Ooh, Jesus, I feel this thing down in my spirit. I feel it down in my, ooh, my God, my God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Faith, hope, and love is always built upon you having a positive mindset and thought life. Are you hearing me? Your thought life, thought life. See, see, you have to be able to embrace a constructive, creative mindset, one that will develop and grow you as a person. Hey, I... I mean, I mean, as an amazing person, amazing human being, why are you still stuck? Why are you still parked on this highway called life? Why are you still complaining and talking about the stuff that happened, what people said about you, the sickness that has hit you, the this, the that, the that, and the this? Don't you know that God is bigger than your problem? Don't you know that he's able? Don't you know that he's not just able, he's ready, willing, and able to do in you and for you what needs to be done? It might not happen today, but I'm here to tell you, God will keep you through the storm. He will keep you through the trial and the test. Oh, man. That's why you got to let go of that destructive mindset, because that destructive mindset will cause you to lose everything that is good in your life. Not just lose, but let go of. Mm. Stop seeking or pursuing everything that is good in your life. See, the consequences of thinking, thinking is devastating. Devastating. Man, it's devastating because it'll set you back. The consequences of stinking thinking, oh man, won't just impact your life. It will impact your relationships. It will impact your relationships with family, with friends. It will even impact your relationship with yourself. Uh, I didn't even add God, Lord Jesus. That's why I say you don't want to give place to stinking thinking. You got to let it go. 
You got to remove all doubt. Leave no room for doubt. My God, my God. Whew, a negative mindset will always produce a negative life. That's why we need to take a look at our lives. Am I happy with what I'm living? Am I happy? Am I truly happy with what I'm living? Is there something more I can be doing that you can be doing that can make your life just a little bit better? Yes, leave no room for doubt. Leave no room for doubt. Because negative thoughts, negative thoughts will lay a foundation for fear and doubt. Negative thoughts will lay a foundation for fear and doubt. And fear and doubt will always lead to worry, stress, anxiety, and nobody loved me. Nobody know what I'm going through. And we know that song, you know, that, that SOS, that same old song. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not today. Don't you know I, you are somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made you. I'm going to say it again. You are somebody amazing. You are somebody, oh God, somebody that has purpose and direction. You are somebody that God is doing a new thing in. Leave no room for doubt. Leave no room for doubt. You have to be able to speak life over yourself. You have to be able to speak life over yourself. See, if you want to stay ahead of the devil, you're going to have to be able to speak life over yourself and not give place to the devil. So you got to be able to speak those things that are not as if they are. Ooh, speak those things that are not. I'm here to tell you, you can do all things through Christ who will strengthen you. Are you hearing me? Being confident of this one thing, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And then that Romans 8, 28 is a verse, my God, my God, that all of us should know by heart. And I know, we know that all things are working together for the good. For those of us who love God, to those of us who are called according to his purpose. Don't just think or speak the word. You have to be able to live by the word of God. See, did you hear what I said? Don't just think or speak the word of God over your life. You have to be able to live by this word of God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing? Let me give you this last verse of scripture and we gonna close. John 8 and 31 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, matter of fact, to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Are you hearing me? You see, see, we're, we're really admonished and instructed by God to continue in his word daily, not just on a Sunday. If you're viewing this, if you're on the prayer line this morning, you know, hey, we have to do this daily. Because, with, hey, every day you wake up, you're living in a fallen world. Every day you wake up, understand that enemy want to, he want to deposit some stuff in you that is not going to be constructive or creative, stuff that's going to, that is designed to break a good man, good woman down. And there's something about that word that is able to build you up and turn you around. And too many people in the body of Christ really don't know mm, 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 or don't want to acknowledge the fact that they are not in a real fight with the devil. You're in a real fight with the devil. And you're going to have to be able to stand up against this enemy that is coming up against you. My brother, my sister, a ready mind will be open to doing the will of God. You got to ready yourself for what God is doing in your life today. You can't ready yourself if you're given place to doubt. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety, all that negativity, stinking thinking. You have to practice those things that are positive. You have to practice being a positive thinker, a positive thinker. Oh, I got to let it go. I got to let go of all that stinking thinking. I got to let go of that, that, that conversation that I have with myself. Mm -mm, that is not good. Leave no room for doubt. Are you hearing me? Leave no room for doubt. Man, I, I have, ooh, I, ooh, man, we can go on and on and on. 
But if you didn't get this word, it's not because the word wasn't spoken over your life today to help you to move past that, that locked room of doubt that you might be stuck in. Mm -mm. It's not God's fault. You have to be able to rise up. You're going to have to be able to shake some stuff off. You're going to have to be able to stand in faith, knowing that all things are working together for the good. Because doubt will rob you of the vision, rob you of the dream, rob you of a hope in the promise of a better tomorrow. That's why you got to leave no room for doubt. This is your day to be blessed. You got to believe it. If you want to receive it, you have to believe it. You have to, oh man, whatever you are trusting and believing God for, expect to receive it. I, I expect God to show up today. I expect that answer today. I expect my healing today. I expect you got to be able to believe it in order to receive it. Because let me remind you, my sister, let me remind you, my brother, you serve an awesome and amazing God. Uh, are you hearing me? And you should be praying and believing God for the impossible. You should be praying and believing God for the impossible. Do we pray in these little itsy bitsy prayers when God is saying, when are you going to really put me to the test? When are you going to really come with that something that, ooh, that can show you that I am, that he is the God of more than enough? Let go of that small-minded thinking. Stand in faith knowing that all things are working together for the good. I tell you every day, and I'm going to say it again, you are amazing. You are amazing. And what is impossible for you to do? All things are possible to them that believe. All you got to do is believe and start looking for the good things that you're believing God for to happen in your life. Some of you need to expect a miracle. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting a change in my life. I know this is my day to be blessed. You have to be able to speak it over yourself. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're viewing this on social media, please share this message with those that you know in your circle that need to uh, hear a word on doubt or uh, hear a word that can motivate them to, let's just say, to step into a change. Those of you on the prayer line this morning, know that you are too blessed to be stressed. Know that God loves you so much. He will never leave you at a place where you're not able to move forward. This is your day. Embrace it. Treat it like it's a good day. And know that all things are working together for the good. Why? because you serve an awesome and amazing God. Dear God, dear Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you once again, Father, for just being an on-time God. Thank you, Lord, for sharing your word, sharing your word today in such a way, Father God, that those of us who've heard, those of us who've come to the uh, channel, Father God, we will never be the same. We believe that in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, for being patient with each and every one of us. We're thanking you today, Father God, because we recognize and realize mm, mm, mm. with an attitude of gratitude, there's no stopping us now. And Father God, I just pray even now, Father God, over each and every family that is represented on the line. I pray, Father God, over these marriages. I'm praying over our children, Father God. And I'm just praying, Father, that you will just, ooh, Lord Jesus, move in a very special way in each and every one of our lives. We love you today, and we thank you today, Father God, for all of what you've done and all of what you will continue to do. And we recognize and realize that all things are working together for the good, mm, 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 because you have made that possible. And we want to say thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise.